Since our first encounter with it, the world of Sanctuary has been rife with suffering and hardship. With crazed kings, invading demons, and dark wanderers, one has to ask, what was it that brought such a fate upon this world? In this first installment of our Diablo lore series, we help answer those questions and more, as we take an in-depth look at the events predating the first game. So join us as we dive into the annals of history and prepare for what may very well be Sanctuary's last war. In the beginning of time, heaven and hell came into existence and began to war with each other. The exact reason for their war was never made clear, but it is all but certainly due to their differing natures. Angels, being of order and light, fight with demons, being of chaos and darkness. Their fight reaches across all of creation, with no clear winner ever emerging. Victories and defeats take place constantly for both sides, and everything perceived as a potential advantage or threat to either side is mercilessly fought over until their never-ending struggle destroys what they covet. Tired of this endless struggle was an angel by the name of Anarius. In his search of an escape from the war, he finds other like-minded angels and eventually even demons who have no wish to fight the other side. The most powerful of these demons is Lilith, daughter of Mephisto, and together with her, they lead their people away from heaven and hell and hide on a world which they name Sanctuary. Anarius and Lilith become lovers, as do many other angel and demon couplings, and from their joining, the Nephilim are born. These Nephilim are the first generation of humans, all perfect in form and with impressive magical abilities. They have such potential, in fact, as to be able to rival the powers of heaven and hell if allowed, something never before seen in the cosmos. A schism appears between Anarius and Lilith, by far the most powerful of the rebels and the de facto leaders. Lilith wants to raise the Nephilim into an army powerful enough to conquer both heaven and hell, while Anarius sees them as a threat to himself and wants to destroy them. Enraged by this, Lilith kills every single angel and demon on Sanctuary, leaving no one alive but herself, Anarius, and the Nephilim. Knowing full well that Anarius cannot stand an existence of loneliness, she knows this will prevent him from killing the Nephilim, and thinks it will force him to change his mind about them. Anarius punishes Lilith for this and imprisons her in the void, an empty space as far away from the rest of creation as is possible. He does not kill the Nephilim, however, but instead twists the powers of the World Stone, a powerful artifact that hides sanctuary from both heaven and hell, to subdue the powers of the Nephilim. Over the generations, their powers grow weaker and weaker until no magical power remains and no one can remember where they came from. During all of this, Heaven and Hell have remained oblivious to the whereabouts of Sanctuary, but eventually, both find it. Once again, they are very near to destroy it completely and all of its inhabitants in their internal struggle, if not for the intervention of a man. A mortal named Odyssean manages to connect himself with the World Stone and defeat Anarius. And with its awesome power at his disposal, he halts the invading armies, though it destroys him in the process. Impressed by mankind's potential, both Heaven and Hell make a pact where mankind shall be given the choice of which side to join, and neither side shall seek to invade Sanctuary so long as the pact holds. With this pact, both sides thus hope to sway mankind to their side of the struggle. In their attempts to sway mankind, demons quickly find that mortals respond much better to brute force, and seek to terrorize them into submission. Heaven tries to stop this, but their astute methods and harsh discipline alienates mankind as much as the demon's ruthlessness. This halt in the great war between heaven and hell and attempts to sway mankind to their side has the legions of hell questioning the authority of their three leaders, Diablo, Mephisto, and Baal. The three were cast out of hell by Asmodon and Belial, who sought to gain control over hell's armies themselves. And Dariel and Duriel assist them, but were not the main instigators of it. Stranded on Sanctuary, the three ravaged the world unchallenged for 40 years, spreading hatred, terror, and destruction amongst the people of the world. Family bonds shattered and nations fell as they passed, and it took 40 years before they were met with any resistance. At that time, Tyrael unites the mage clans under a single order, the Herodrum, and gives them the soul stones which will be able to contain the demon lords. Mephisto was the first to be captured in the jungles of Kejistan. One year later, Baal was tracked down in the deserts of Aranag. While the capture of Mephisto had worked, Baal's destructive nature damaged the Soul Stone during the encounter. Unable to hold the Lord of Destruction, Tal Rasha believes he can use his own body to complete the prison. He is thus imprisoned underneath the sands in one of the seven tombs. 
Diablo escapes and makes his way across the world for another nine years before being captured in Condoras. The Herodrum bury him in the ground and build a cathedral on top of his prison. Sixty years later, the cathedral is abandoned by the few Herodrum still there. The order dissolves with the threat of the three diminished. And 180 years later, during the events of Diablo 1, no one remembers what was originally buried under there. These are the events leading up to our first encounter with Sanctuary. The story has been set, and the major players revealed. Join us next time as we take a look at the events of Diablo 1 and continue the story of this troubled world.